Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Y'all come on in the shop and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to do a small project, a bottle stopper. I think it might be the perfect time of year to turn some bottle stoppers. So many of you are going to be going to uh, New Year's Eve parties and stuff. What better gift for the host than a custom made bottle stopper that you made yourself? So let's go ahead and we'll get started with that. In the lathe here, I've got chucked up a small piece of maple. Looking at the measurements on this, we're about an inch and five eighths by an inch and five eighths by roughly three and three quarters inches long. We're gonna start off by flattening this in. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this little cut right here and then we'll come in and do a planing cut. get that down to a little bit round and then we're going to come right across the end here and we're just going to make a cut right across the end what that's going to do is ensure that we have a flat surface here we can go ahead and put our straight edge on it and absolutely we have a flat surface once we've accomplished that we're going to go ahead and put our Jacobs chuck in here. We've got a 5 16 inch drill bit in it and we've marked back roughly 3 quarters of an inch. And we're just going to go ahead and drill 3 quarters of an inch into that. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and take our drill bit out of our Jacobs chuck and replace that with a 3 8 inch tap. Now different ones may do this differently. I like to at least start my tap knowing it's going straight. And so I'm going to just kind of get the, the tool wrist out of the way here. We're going to pull the, the tap up and we're just going to start turning. And as we're turning, that tap's feeding into that. Folks, do not try to do this under power. You'll strip this out and have a huge mess in a hurry. Once we start turning it backwards, we're going to pull out on our, on our uh, tailstock. Then we'll push back in on our tailstock, rotate it in some more. When we're unscrewing it, we're pulling out on that tailstock. Once we get it started, then we can come in Okay, once we've got it started, then we can come in and we can do this by hand. We can just rotate using our, uh, holding on to our chuck. We can just rotate this in. Remember, we didn't go very deep, okay? So we just hit the bottom of that. Important not to keep going once you hit bottom. You will strip it out in a hurry. So what we want to know now is, Will our bottle stopper screw into it? It appears that it will. And it screws in all the way. So basically, we've made a bottle stopper at this point. I'm not sure you'd be able to give it away or sell it, but it's, it's a bottle stopper. So we'll take this back out. Now we've got to design something. So I'm going to take the wood out of the chuck. I'll show you the mandrel, and we will design a bottle stopper. So folks, what I have here is actually an adapter. The one way has 33 and a half millimeter threads. Most of these that you buy are gonna have one inch. So they'll work well on a mini lathe or a midi lathe. And the only reason I've got this piece is so we can put this on this larger lathe. So once we get that on there, we're just gonna thread our blank right on up on that and there we go so we are ready to start turning our blank now let's talk just a little bit about design so many times i go to craft fairs and i'm i'm selling bottle stoppers and you know i may have sold eight or ten at that point and some other wood turner will come over and say oh my goodness you're getting 25 dollars a piece for yours have you sold any i said i've sold a few how many have you sold he says I'm charging 20 for mine and I hadn't sold one yet. So I go over and I take a look at them and they're basically just straight pieces of wood. 
without much design whatsoever. I'm going to challenge each one of you to not take the simple route here. To go ahead and try to do something a little more. Put a little design in your bottle stoppers. What do I mean? Well, let me show you just a few examples of things that I have done. So let's take a look at this. Nothing special, but I did put just a little bit of design in there. And notice on this particular stopper, it's one that'll stand up. So you can set that on a table. Again, nothing special there, but just a little bit of design. It's not just a flat or round, I should say, piece of wood. Again, put a little extra into it. This one has some burn marks on it. it has a little finial on top of it. Another one. And a lot of these folks, I got these design ideas from looking at finials on furniture and masonry work and stuff. This is just a simple one. Again, it's just a knob. I don't sell very many of these, but I always make sure I keep one around just, just in case somebody wants something simple and they want something short that might go in the refrigerator better. If you can get something special interest, like if you've got somebody that's interested in playing chess, they're going to buy this one. So just keep that in mind. If you can do something that's going to be of interest to someone with a special interest, you're batting a thousand and those will sell. So let's talk about design for just a minute. I'm going to zoom out on this. This is a book that uh, I picked up earlier this year. I can tell you folks, I highly recommend this because it has tons of different forms and stuff that you can see in the back. There's just a whole series, page after page, of stuff that will make great bottle stoppers. If you don't have this and you do wood turning, again, I highly recommend it. As a matter of fact, I will put a link to it in the description. Now let me talk about the links just a minute. I have put a few links in my description for things that I have used on videos before, but to the urging of uh, several other folks that have YouTube channels and, and even some of the folks that watch the YouTube channels, I have joined the Amazon affiliate program. If you click on one of those links going forward, yes, I will get a small uh, commission if you buy anything, any of those items. So I just want to make sure I disclose that. You know what, tonight on this one, let's do something simple. We'll do this one here. I think that'll make a nice little uh, example. It'll be quick, easy to turn. And if you do this one and give it away to uh, one of the hostesses, they're gonna love it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing this down. Let's let this tool rest down just a little bit. Okay, so just keep in line with that. We kind of brought it down to a point. Give you guys a different angle. So we've got that. And then we're going to start basically rolling this over. Let's grab our 3-8 spindle gouge and that will allow us to roll this bead here. And we want to roll that bead so that it's just coming in to where our... Let me stop the lathe so I can speak to this real quick. This is basically going to be the same diameter as our blank here. So we roll that bead over so that it came right up to that. 
We're going to come back in this side. We're going to roll it back over in here. There we go. And I'm noticing this is not an even uh, curve here. So we're going to come back in here with a skew. That evened out that curve just a little bit here. Okay, folks, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit this with some 120, 220, and 320. We're going to be running the lathe roughly about 500 RPM. This is the 150. This sand, sandpaper is reaching the end of its life. It's not one of those things we talk about a lot, folks, but how do you know when sandpaper is worn out? Well... Some folks think it's never worn out. But you see the you see the dust flying off the top of that? Hopefully you guys can see that in the video. If you're getting dust like that flying off, you still you're still okay. And I don't care if you're talking about 150 grit sandpaper or you're talking about 600 grit sandpaper. When you're sanding on the wood and the dust quits flying, it's, it's time to get another piece. The other thing is if you can't hold your finger on that sandpaper while it's turning, you're probably turning too fast. You're eating up your sandpaper prematurely and you're doing some really crazy stuff to that wood because when it gets too hot, you create all kinds of problems, especially in bigger turnings. Okay, we'll hit it with just a little bit of 320 here. Now, do you remember what I said about when the dust is not coming off of it? Does anybody see any dust? I don't. Let's try a little bit on the other end of that. It may be time to grab another piece of sandpaper. There you go. See the difference? Hopefully you do. Alright folks, looking at that looks pretty good to me. We're going to put a little finish on it here in just a second. Folks, I'm going to put a little finish on this and... Uh, We'll assemble it, and I'll be back in just a second. One other thing I want to talk to you about, these little pieces here may not seem like such a big deal. Make sure you're getting the stainless steel. There's nothing more embarrassing than to save a buck or two on a uh, chrome-plated bottle stopper and then give it to a friend, and a few months later they bring it back to you and it's a corroded mess. Just know that the chrome plated ones will corrode if somebody actually uses it. Go with the stainless steel. You'll feel a whole lot better about the product and you won't be embarrassed by someone bringing one back to you, okay? Folks, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and go down and click the subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified when I turn out a new video, click the bell, that'll send you a notification. Always appreciate the likes and the comments. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, so we're going to put just a little bit of uh, Minwax Antique Oil finish on this. I have been using this finish on bottle stoppers for a while. It seems to hold up well. You put multiple coats on and you can get a really nice glossy finish on it. I'm going to stop it short of the glossy finish tonight. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down, which basically will have the effect of giving us a kind of a satin finish. So folks, one of the things I found out when this gets difficult to come off here, you can take this rubbery back sandpaper that I use, or if you don't have that, the rubbery silicone uh, bottle openers, or if you just got some of that rubbery shelf paper that they use, kind of a, a net type stuff, those work well as too, well too. So let's get this so I don't unscrew the 
the adapter off the lathe. And again, it gets stuck in there pretty, pretty hard sometimes, not always. So folks, once you've got all that done, you just screw this on. And there you go, you've got a bottle stopper. For the most part, I'll go ahead and put a shiny finish on this. I do leave a few satin like this from time to time. So I may just leave this one as satin. And I will put up photos of some different bottle stoppers that I've done at the end of this video so that you can see some different styles, okay? Folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.